What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 1 of our brand new snake game series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now before we begin, I want to show you a quick preview of what you will be able to do at the end of this series. I'm going to hit the green flag and as you can see we have a pretty neat snake game and each and every time the snake hits the food, um, the snake grows larger. And as soon as we hit one of the walls, then the game ends and you can see we had a message with the score. So that's pretty cool and that is what you will be learning to make at the end of this series. So without further ado, let's get right into our code. Once you set up your editor, the first thing I'm going to do is to delete the cat sprite and after that I'm going to upload my snake sprite. So I've added a couple of downloadable costumes in the description below. So you can go through that and download all the necessary sprites. And I've actually saved them on my backpack as well as you can see. But you can download them and instead of doing what I'm doing, which is going to be painting and then uploading the costume itself, you can just click on upload a sprite and then navigate through your files for the particular file. So I'm just going to paint a sprite and now I'm just going to drop this entire sprite into the backpack which is costume eyes and I'm going to delete the first costume. Now this is the snake sprite and the snake sprite is going to have two costumes. The first one is going to be its eye costume which is always going to be in the front and the second one is the body costume which is going to be the clone costume. I'll explain what I mean a little bit later. So drag and drop both those costumes or in your case upload the costume. And once you're done with that, I'm going to rename this sprite to be snake. Perfect. And after that, I'm going to get into the snake movement. So when the green flag is clicked, and that's the way I'm going to start, although you could have an, uh, a message initialized right here, and that would make it easier to restart levels, but I'm just going to have it this way. So when green flag is clicked, what we'd want to do is first of all, make the size a bit smaller. Now I could have a set size right here, but I'm going to do it within this, um, I'm not sure what this is called actually within the information about the sprite itself. Perfect. Now after that, I'm gonna add in a show because we will be hiding the snake a little bit later on. And right after this, I need a few variables, okay? The first variable is going to be called xvel, which is going to be holding the velocity in the x direction. The second one is going to be called yvel, which is going to be holding the velocity in the y direction. The third one is going to be called direction, which is going to hold the direction of the sprite. So it could be up, down, left, or right. And that's it I'm going to do for now. So right after this, I'm going to set direction to be right. Uh, I'm going to point in direction 90 degrees. So we're pointing towards the right. And we are going to switch the costume to not body, but snake or other eyes. Okay, so this is going to be the snake eyes costume. So once you're done with this, we need to move to some particular coordinate. So the coordinate I'm going to move to is going to be about x negative 30 and y is 0. So center of the stage, but to the left so that the user gets a little bit of time to react. Now we haven't set up our x well, y well, uh, etc. variables. So that's what I'll be doing right now. So I'll be setting x well and y well right on top. So I'm going to set x well to be 5 and uh, I'm going to set y well to be 5 as well. So after you're done with that, head over to control, grab a forever loop and have an if then. And within that if then, I'm going to have an or and within each of the odds, I'm going to put in an equal to. So once you're done with that, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, first, uh, head over to the variables tab and say if direction is equal to either R or L. So if direction is equal to L, or direction is equal to R. Well, in this case, we want the snake to move through our X axis. So I want it to move either left or right. And what I'm going to do to do that is to just say change X by X well. And that is pretty much it. Now you can just duplicate this entire thing. And uh, within your second block, what I'm going to do is change uh, directions to be U and D. I'm abbreviating them basically. So R stands for right, L stands for left, U stands for up and D stands for down. Well, in this case, I'm going to change Y by my Y velocity. And once you're done with that, you should already have kind of an idea of how we're going to go about this. Now, obviously, in this case, our velocity is always going to be positive and hence 
things really don't make much sense and we also don't uh, change the directions just as yet but that's what we'll be doing right now so uh, now head over to events and grab this block of code which says when key space is pressed and change that to be um, first right arrow and after that here's what you need to do so before I get into what I'm going to do within the if right arrow key is pressed if all the conditions are right I'm going to first check for a condition and that condition is its current direction okay and here's what I mean so if the snake is moving let's just say towards the left just follow uh, my mouse pointer right here it's moving like this and let's just say it's a pretty long snake now obviously it makes no sense for the user to just press the right arrow key and then make it go right back through its entire body now even at our finished game we will still be able to do that but that would only be if the snake moves in a complete circle and I don't want the player to be enabled to just move the snake back onto itself. So what I'm going to do here is to grab an if then and now head over to operators and grab a not. So if the direction is not left, in this case, well, I'm going to go ahead with my code. But if the direction is equal to left, then I do not want to do anything. That's the idea of this if then. So if this is the case, then here's what I need to do. First, I'm going to point in direction 90 and this will ensure that our eye points towards the correct direction. And after we're done with that, what I'm going to do is to set the direction to be um, to be R. Okay. Now, here's where the tricky part is. We're going to set X velocity to B. And here, what's important to understand is that the X velocity can be positive or it can be negative. If it's positive, it's going to move towards the right. And if it's negative, it's going to move towards the left. That's the idea. So now here, if you think about it, we have two case scenarios. So if the velocity is already positive, then we can keep it to be positive. But if the X velocity is negative, then we need to make it positive. So either way, we need to make sure that the X velocity is positive. And for this, you can have a simple if then, and that's perfectly fine. But Scratch actually comes with a shortcut through which we can uh, enable this. And that is to head over to operators and grab this block which says abs of. And this takes the absolute value or the positive value regardless of what the x value is. So if it's negative 5, it's going to be 5. If it's 5, it's going to be 5 still. And we can just put in the x velocity inside that block and put the entire thing there. And this will ensure that your x velocity is set up correctly if the right arrow key is pressed. Now I'm going to duplicate this entire thing to, and change this to be left arrow. And once again, I'm going to do pretty much the opposite of what I did for the right arrow key. I'm going to change the left direction to be right. I'm going to change the point in direction 90 to be negative 90. I'm going to set the direction to be L. And lastly, instead of just changing it to the be, uh, to be the absolute value of x velocity, I'm going to change it to be negative of the absolute value of x velocity. And make sure you put this entire abs inside of this second um, block, because in case you put uh, like the minus inside uh, abs instead of the other way down, well, you're going to get some weird errors. And every time you press left, it's still going to move towards the right. And that's going to be very, very weird. OK, so just make sure you do this. And you can either say um, a minus one times the absolute value of x velocity, or you can just say zero minus the absolute value of x velocity. Either way, it's the same thing. And this will ensure that your right and left movement is set up correctly. So I'm going to hit the green flag right here and show you what I mean. And now you can see that for some reason, we really don't have anything um, moving. And the reason for that is this. Now we can see that our x velocity, despite being um, changed to negative, is not moving back to, um, is despite being positive, is not moving into the negative direction. But the reason for that is our entire if then. So this loop is not allowing us to change direction um, when the direction is either left or right for the um, right and left arrow keys respectively. So if the direction is left, then I can't press the right arrow key. I mean, I could press the right arrow key, but nothing's going to happen. And the same way when we try to move left, this if condition is preventing it from doing so. And that is perfect. That's exactly what we need. So now what I'm going to do is to duplicate this and make it for the up arrow key. And now you'll be able to see some movement after I've set up the up and, uh, up and down arrow keys. So now I'm going to say if direction is not equal to down. Well, in this case, I'm going to point in direction zero, which is upwards. And uh, here I'm going to change this to be just abs off. But I'm going to change this to be y velocity. And I'm going to say set it to be the absolute value of y velocity. Perfect. 
And uh, I think right here, I didn't change this. I'm gonna set the direction to be up. Now I'm gonna duplicate this once again. And here, once again, the usual changes. So first I'll change this to be down arrow. And yep, I changed everything as well. So I'm gonna change this to down arrow, change this uh, D to be U. I'm gonna point in direction 180 right here. And after this, I'm gonna change it to be zero minus the absolute value of Y velocity. And right here, I'm gonna change the direction to be down. Perfect. So now let's test out our code. I'm gonna hide all the variables and then let's hit the green flag. So now you can see that we can move our snake around and you can already see that we do not uh, have the ability to move through our cells and that's already pretty cool. And that is perfect and that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.